the agencies did go some way to try and keep the government honest. As a whistleblower, Wilkie was now in a new space. Even though events appeared to have proved him right, no one could find the weapons of mass destruction. Ironically, it also exposed him to a new range of attacks as his opponents sought to beef up their waning position. Less than three months after the invasion, there was outrage in the UK that the Blair government may have sexed up the case against Saddam. A parliamentary inquiry was set up. Wilkie's stand had attracted international attention. He was called to London to give evidence before a British parliamentary committee. It was, he hoped, a chance to put his case to the world. I naively thought it was a fair income inquiry keen to explore the UK's involvement in the whole Iraq misadventure. I genuinely don't understand uh, one thing they were saying. I only fronted them for about an hour and it was absolutely clear that their purpose was to discredit me. What is your evidence to suggest that the security and intelligence services have acquiesced by their silence in a comprehensive and wholesale doctrine of evidence by two governments. I mean, it's, it's, it's just too fantastic for words. Don't put words in my mouth. No, I won't want to do that. But this was politics in a furnace. A government accused of lying to wage a war, then holding an inquiry to prove that it hadn't. A government official found dead in a field, Blair's popularity at an all-time low. It was not a place for the faint-hearted. I was tired. It was a very hostile environment. I'm not accusing the British intelligence or security services or anything. I'm accusing mm -hmm. the British government, mm -hmm. along with the US and the Australian government, of exaggerating the Iraq WMD threat and the associated terrorism threat. That's... I have no concerns with intelligence. What's your evidence for that, the exaggeration? What's my evidence? Yeah. The evidence, Mr yeah, Kinley, yeah. is that what has been found in Iraq is you... nowhere near what is described in this book. That's my evidence. I think that is the most... the, the clearest evidence anyone could produce you, to this You and I don't know what has... Or the British inquiry was a confronting experience. Wilkie was also under attack at home. A secret report had conveniently fallen into the hands of conservative journalist Andrew Bolt. I actively went out. I'll, it's, that's the only thing I'll say about it. Significantly, the article quoted directly from a secret ONA report prepared by Wilkie. In the article, the journalist admitted that he had the secret report, seemingly an offence under the Crimes Act punishable by five years jail. Five weeks later, the government eventually agreed to an investigation to find out who was responsible for the leak. That takes us back to the Yesminster Hollow Men type of scenarios where you authorise an investigation knowing full well that nothing will ever come of it um, down the track. It'll go, you know, the, the kind of orthodox period is seven to ten months and journalists and others forget about it, the opposition forgets about it and the report is inconclusive. And that's exactly what happened. But in August 2003, the government was forced into holding a parliamentary inquiry, just as the British had. It would look into the failure of the intelligence agencies to advise there were no weapons of mass destruction. Wilkie left the joint committee in no doubt about his feelings. And the government lied every time it skewed, misrepresented, used selectively and fabricated the Iraq story. So regardless of what you think about the arguments for or against the war with Iraq, you believe that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and had the capability of using them? I was surprised you're going down this path because I've acknowledged from the start that he had a disjointed and contained WMD program. I've never disputed that. Again, Wilkie, the one whistleblower in the world who spoke out, found himself under attack as the government scrambled for cover. You're obviously seeking to discredit me by saying I didn't talk about the dossier. Well, I don't get paranoid, Mr Wilkie. The government has never chosen to denigrate you personally. You raised a number of personal problems. That's not my interest whatsoever. My experience at the first Australian inquiry was not much better than my experience at the British inquiry. In both cases, there seemed to be more interest in discrediting me than in genuinely hearing what I had to say about the Iraq misadventure. Did your one report conclude that Iraq had a WMD ca capability? Good question. And yes, it did. 
and I have never said otherwise in the five and a half months since I resigned. What did happen, much to Wilkie's great surprise, was that Senator MacDonald seemed to be in possession of a top secret document, one he was not cleared to have. Didn't your report suggest that Iraq could use chemical and biological weapons on its own people? Yes. And did your report also suggest that the, there would be mass panic of refugees that had fled his biological weapons? And has that turned out to be correct? You are you're obviously uh, quoting from the report. and um, I knew he was quoting from it. It wasn't so clear to me at the time, but with the benefit of hindsight, it's very clear to me. He had no right to have that report or to have been briefed on that report. He had no right to that secret information. He had obviously been provided with that secret information when the government was putting together its attack on me. Senator MacDonald denied he was in possession of the secret report. To have it could have put him in breach of the Commonwealth Crimes Act. They had little interest in what I had to say and were much more interested in discrediting me. I was a nuisance. Uh, I, I was a nuisance for many, for many reasons. And in the Senate chamber itself, Wilkie was again attacked, this time by West Australian Liberal David Johnston. He hasn't got a single, solitary, decent, respectable fact. This man is incongruous, he is inconsistent, he is unreliable. It's an insult to our intelligence, Mr Deputy President. But Wilkie was determined to have his say. By 2004, he had written a book and had managed to work his way around the Crimes Act. I was very careful in writing that book not to reveal any sensitive information because, after all, I'm the fellow who accuses the government of the misuse of information, so the last thing I was going to do was misuse information, pressing my case. I was immensely impressed that there was one Australian in a reasonably senior position in government who had the um, courage to blow the whistle on, on what I thought was probably the most shameful act in post-war Australian history. Um, uh, and so um, I'm prone to people with courage and brains and I thought Andrew had courage and brains to do what he did. The book was published by Black Ink who were about to find themselves snared in the government's games with Wilkie. The draft was finalised and Black Ink sent the draft off to a lawyer to be legaled, as is normal practice with any book that's written in Australia. Uh, it appears that the lawyer took one look at the draft and sent it to the Attorney General's department without uh, reference back to the publisher or me. The Attorney General's department wrote a letter saying They've come into possession of this book. They're very alarmed at its contents. It can't be published, nor work has to stop. Wilkie's lawyers had contacted Martin Tui, a lawyer, someone with a specialty in national security and defence issues. I thought, well, that, that's our man. He's someone who's honourable, who knows the military and, I would think, intelligence, and thus their law connected to them, and is a lawyer and fully trained to do this job. As a lawyer, of course, uh, uh, you have uh, an obligation to protect your client's uh, uh, secrecy. You, uh, legal professional privilege is a, a very, very powerful and fundamental doctrine in our uh, system of law because it enables people to seek advice. As a citizen, you think that a priest taking a confession is going to keep it confidential. I had thought in my innocence that a lawyer who, who one asked to do a job would either say yes I'll do it or no I won't do it. But I didn't anticipate and still a bit surprised that a lawyer in that situation didn't decline the job on the grounds that they felt uneasy about doing it but rather went to the government um, behind our backs. It depends which part, type of secrecy legislation you're talking about, but anything involving defence and national security, the lawyer was absolutely correct. It's a strict liability test that not only extends to the person who has communicated the information, but also extends to the person who receives the information, even if they are innocent and not even aware of what the information is. Because the lawyer turned the uh, manuscript over to the Attorney General's department, uh, and uh, that raised it raised very, very important and interesting issues. 
Uh, I understand there was a complaint about the lawyer's conduct which has been dismissed by the uh, ACT Law Society. The upshot was that the government decided the book would have to be censored. They kept saying that the information they'd censored from the book was so breathtakingly sensitive that they had to be sure that there's not a, there wasn't a computer in the land with any remnant of that information. How those issues are dealt with and the protection of information in relation to uh, intelligence uh, can be of the utmost importance. Having ensured the book was censored, ASIO eventually sought to round up all the originals. Not only did they do my computer, but they went to Tamworth and cleansed my family's computers. It's unclear whether or not they had a warrant under a specific legislation like the ASIO Act. Uh, if they did have a warrant, uh, then it presumably had a protection clause in it that uh, required non-disclosure of the fact that there was a warrant, so we can't find out. If they didn't have a warrant, it's arguable that they acted outside their competence and possibly illegally. That's one of the appalling things about the Wilkie story that we do not know uh, and no one is telling what the situation was. What this was was a period of bullying and theatre uh, to send a message to publishers, to me, I think more importantly to my former colleagues, that uh, the government will not tolerate anyone crossing the line and, and, and trying to publish anything critical of the government. The Secrecy Act, along with current terrorism laws, have a heavy impact on individual freedoms. That's part of the Byzantine nature of that kind of legislation. Legislation that says if you get raided by someone, you're not allowed to tell anyone that you've been raided. You're not allowed to tell anyone that there's been a warrant. Uh, where do you go? If there isn't a warrant, uh, then uh, there are some other provisions that might come into play that might uh, uh, cause you trouble. Uh, if there is a warrant, uh, what do you do? Uh, you can't say there's a warrant. Uh, it, it places people in an impossible situation. 